When Android 12 was released, it came with the long-awaited Material U design. Android OS would automatically select a color palette to theme the OS with based on the background image you had set. Unfortunately, as detailed in the article on Fingerprint.com, this seemingly simple feature comes at a price, and that price is your privacy. I use a privacy and security oriented OS called Graphene OS, and when I first installed it, I thought it was a little bit odd that it didn't come with a wallpaper, it just had a black background. But after some research, I think I know why. So in order for Android OS to detect the main colors in your wallpaper, it has to perform some analysis. Android 8.1 introduced the method getWallpaperColors, which returns three main colors from a wallpaper image. I want to mention before going into the explanation that apps don't require any additional permission to use the get wallpaper colors method. So since Android is open source, we can see exactly how this is done. K-means clustering has a few concepts I want to give a quick overview of. I'm by no means a math genius, but here's an oversimplified example to help demonstrate how that works. So according to the developer docs, the three main colors that are extracted using the get wallpaper colors method is primary, secondary, and tertiary. So just looking at this example, it's pretty easy to pick out what the three main colors are from this image. But if you take a random image, for example, with the naked eye, you can't just pick out what the exact three main colors are. With k-means clustering, k is the total number of groups or clusters that we're trying to find. The algorithm would then cluster together the main colors in the image. So as it would run through different iterations, the uncommon colors would then be eliminated, in this case red, green, yellow, and brown. The colors that would be clustered together at this stage then, we would have pink as the primary since there are four of them, black would be the secondary with three, and the tertiary color would be blue with two. So if all images on earth were made up of these three same main colors, then this wouldn't be a big deal because k-means clustering would get the exact same color palette for everyone, but that's not the case. So Android uses HSL for its colors, which is hue, saturation, and lightness, but this example uses RGB, which is red, green, and blue. So this fancy image helps visualize colors in a three-dimensional space. Every single color can be represented by a single point in this three-dimensional cube. So back to the article. If you look at this, R, G, and B, the red, green, and blue, each of those have 256 possible combinations, or 2 to the 8th. So if you ever used any photo editing software, then you may have seen sliders like this. So here we have the RGB, and each of those has a total of 256 combinations. So you may notice that the top value is 255. This is zero-based counting, so starting at zero all the way to 255, that gives us 256 combinations. So since each of those has 256 possible combinations, we can multiply 2 to the 8th times 2 to the 8th times 2 to the 8th. We get 2 to the 24th combinations for every color. So 2 to the 24th power is how many combinations there are for one single color. With the get wallpaper colors method on Android OS, we're getting three colors. So that means we can take 2 to the 24th times 2 to the 24th and so on. And we end up with 2 to the 72nd combinations per image. So on Android, similar to iOS, you can set both a home screen wallpaper and a lock screen wallpaper. And this same logic applies to both images. Therefore, since we have 2 to the 72nd for the home screen image, we then add in the lock screen image and we end up with 2 to the 144th power number of combinations. So the more combinations that are possible, the higher probability that a unique value is generated based on the images you have set. And in this case, 2 to the 144th power translates to this gigantic number. So this article gives a good example. For context, how large is that? So the universe is made up of 10 to the 80th atoms, and 2 to the 144th power is approximately 10 to the 43rd. So that means that the total number of combinations using the home screen and lock screen wallpaper is more than half the number of atoms in the universe, which is a lot. So with the math out of the way, let's demo this in an easy to understand method of how this can be used by an app to generate a unique ID based on your wallpapers. So fingerprint.com who published this article also created an app to demonstrate how this could be used. So what the app does is it gets the three colors from your wallpaper, the primary, secondary, and tertiary. It then takes those three values and passes them to a SHA-256 hash function to create a single string which we can then use for identification. So on my device, I currently have a unique picture set of me with my parents. Um, so to test out the app, it's called Wallpaper ID. So if you do want to test this out on your device, you should probably read the terms first. They do collect the unique ID for research purposes, and you'll see why shortly in the app. So if we press Get Started. So using those three colors, technically six, they're able to generate a unique ID, which is listed under your ID. 
and we can see down below, it is unique among 2,884 tests so far. I understand this is not a huge sample size, but even out of that many tests, we still were able to create a unique ID based off of our wallpaper image. And so just to demonstrate why a black wallpaper might be ideal. So I just set my wallpaper to black. If I go to wallpaper ID again, again, same thing, get started. We can see the lock screen color and the system screen colors, both black. And now we have our unique ID again, but this time it says 216 users have the same ID among 2,885 tests so far. So what this means is that 216 other tests had this same exact wallpaper, therefore a unique ID was not created because all of us will have the same ID. It's also worth mentioning that this ID will stay the exact same even if you uninstall the app, because if the wallpaper is the same, then those three main colors that are generated will also be exactly the same. So is this a big deal and something you should worry about? Maybe. It's tough to say. It is a cool feature that some apps use to get those three main colors to actually theme the app itself. But then again, as we saw in the example, an app developer could use this in a malicious way to generate a unique ID based off your wallpaper. So what can you do to lessen your risk? Never use a personal picture as your wallpaper or a picture of me, as tempting as that might be. And the reason for that is that theoretically, that exact image will be globally unique, which will then generate a globally unique ID for you, which could then be used to track you. Another option would be to use the default image that comes with your device, as it's likely others have that same image set and never changed it. Another option would be to go the route of Graphene OS and use a plain black background. It's not the most exciting, but it does grow on you after a while. If you are interested in learning more about mobile security and privacy, and migrating away from the stock OS on your device to something like Graphene OS, I will link some videos on the screen now for you to check out. And if you do have any questions or feedback, please feel free to leave those down below in the comments, and I'll see you next time.